Just a couple quick hands here to discuss uh, that have gone down so far. So, in the first one, the under the gun player opens for 75, folds all the way to me in the $20 blind or the straddle, uh, and I look down at pocket threes, I go ahead and make the call. So, heads up to a flop, and we see a rather favorable flop this time. Comes 10 5 3 rainbow. I check it over to the initial razor, uh, but no C bet, unfortunately, and he checks it back. Turn is a six of hearts, brings it back to our flush draw on board. Uh, I, I go for some value, and I bet $90. Another gun player calls. So we go to the river card, which is an offsuit ace. Feels like a card that should be better for his range uh, instead of my range. And I feel like he can be floating uh, on the turn with some ace highs. Certainly checking back some ace highs on the flop. Uh, there's a lot of hands where I'd want to go into check call mode uh, when the ace comes. Um, a lot of other pairs, pocket pairs, where I don't have a set, obviously, uh, that I'd want to go into check call mode or check fold mode. So I decided to check it over to him and try and induce a bet. Good news is he puts out a bet and he bets $155. So I should be able to have some sort of a check raise bluffing range here and check raise value range. Um, it feels like his range should be pretty capped because he should always be betting uh, various value holdings on the flop. Aside from maybe top set, you might feel inclined to check that one back since the board is so dry. But I feel like aside from that, his range should be pretty capped here. Um, and I feel like with that being the case, I should be able to have a profitable check raise bluffing range. So. All that in mind, uh, I decide to go ahead and put in a check raise and I make it $680. Opponent goes into the tank, thinking for quite some time. Ultimately, he decides on a fold. So, fortunately, no more value there. Um, I like my line, I'm pretty sure I like my line. Uh, I'm not sure about my sizing, really. Uh, there's always that question of sizing. If I had gone a little bit smaller, probably could have gotten a call, um, but it feels like I should be sizing it around there uh, if I'm including some bluffs. Obviously, I say these things not uh, meaning that you always need to be balanced, especially in a location where you don't always play, but things to consider, especially uh, in the middling uh, stakes as we, as we move up into 5, 10, 20, 10, 20 stakes and beyond. Um, things to consider more often, but I don't know. Didn't get the uh, the call on the river there, but happy to win the pot. Last interesting hand here. I look down at pocket queens in middle position and open it up for seventy dollars. The small blind and the straddle make the call. So three ways to a flop of jack, deuce, deuce, rainbow. Checks to me and can put in a value bet here. Don't need to make it too big since the board is so dry. So I make it one hundred and fifteen. The small blind puts in a quick check raise. He looks at me and puts in a quick check raise to 420. Straddler folds and it's back on me. Not going anywhere right away. Uh, certainly not going anywhere on this drive aboard. Hard, to, hard for him to connect too hard with this board. Um, obviously would be perhaps some of his hands that he could be uh, check raising for value with, like ace jack. And it's tough for him to have a deuce in a small blind, but who knows. Um, but Queen's too strong to fold here, so I go ahead and call. Turn is an ace. This time he leads out for $700. Interesting spot, um, our, and our hand is faring a little uh, less good um, now that there's an overcard on the board. But I don't think we can just give up right away just yet. It's possible that he still has a deuce, um, and our hand in our range has decreased somewhat. But I'm just not ready to give it up just yet. So once again, I go ahead and make the call. River comes another deuce. Interesting card. And this time he leads out for $800. So now it's obviously less likely that he has a deuce. Almost impossible for him to have a deuce. I feel like the hand that I'm most worried about is an ace jack. But there's not very many combinations of that available since there's an ace and a jack on the board. The price seems pretty good. Uh, he only bet 800 into a decent sized pot here. I guess I just relied on the fact that it's tough for him to have a deuce here. It's tough for him to have ace jack here. There's just not that many combinations of these various hands that he can be raising for value. 
Pocket Queens is somewhat up there. I could have uh, other hands that I might call down here with, the, since the flop is just so dry, and it's tough for him to really raise that many hands for value. So, Pocket Queens, sort of middle of the road. Not the, not the best hand, but not the worst hand I could, I could have in this spot. I kind of announced that I thought he might have Ace-Jack. He was just kind of staring me down, so I felt like it was one of those strong means weak kind of a things, and I just tossed him the call. He gives us some good news, and he says, good call, I have king-queen. So, I go ahead and show, as I usually do, roll it over, and the good news is that he mucks this time. So, no slow roll, and we win a pretty decent sized pot here. Pocket queens come through. Sometimes I call down a little bit too lightly, uh, for sure, and uh, this one could have gone either way pretty easily, but this time it worked out. In this next hand, there are two limbs, and I looked down at ace-four diamonds in the straddle position. Happy to see a flop here, so I go ahead and check it. Flop comes ace-8-8, eight, eight, eight. so we flop trips here. Since the, the third card, since the other card is an ace, uh, I decide to just check it rather than lead out because I feel like the ace is probably better for their range instead of the, uh, the straddler's range and feel likely that they can represent that card rather than me lead out and uh, not be able to represent too much other than very strong value. So, that's my thinking. I go ahead and check it over to them. The action checks to the cutoff, who puts out a bet and he bets $40. I just decided to flat call. I don't see too much reason to raise at this point. Uh, the other player folds, so heads up to the turn. Turn is a 90 diamonds, which brings us a flush draw to go along with our trips. So I decided to check it over to him again, and he bets again. This time for $100. I feel like if we raise, then again, we might be overrepping our hand a little bit. If he happens to have an eight, he's in all likelihood gonna have us dominated. So, I don't know, I just decided on a uh, flat call. I feel like flat is probably best here, but could, could certainly entertain a raise. The river is certainly a rather favorable card. The river is the fourth eight, so we make quads on the river. I think the standard play is to check it to him again because he should, in all likelihood, continue with his entire range. His entire range should consist of an ace, Random bluffs, I don't even think, I don't really expect him to have those, any other cards, any other hands in his range at this point, so. So for unknown reasons, I decided to lead out. I bet $225 leading into him. Not really sure why. Uh, I don't really have that much of an explanation for it. But then, just fear of him checking back, which makes no sense whatsoever, but. I decided to lead out for 225. The very good news is that my opponent decides to jam all in. $1,400. Uh, it's about as big of a gift. What on earth? That was the, uh, that was the gift horn, apparently. That's the $1,400 gift horn. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna take down this pot uh, after my opponent jams all in for $1,400. I show my hand and uh, he he goes ahead and mucks it. He claims he had an ace. He's maybe shoving all in to push me off of a chop. But my somewhat terrible lead out on the river um, when I think I should just be going for a, a check raise. It just worked out, worked out for the max. Yeah, the bet seems to induce maximum, so bad play uh, worked out. Forgot to mention, we got a little bro here. Jonathan Nimi, ladies and gentlemen. You're actually the reason that I got into poker. It's your fault. That's true. I mean, it's all me. It's his fault. Everyone has you to thank for this vlog. Where's my cut? Uh, here's uh, no, that's too much. I need to make it's far too much. I need to make change at the next at the next uh, stop. Hey man. Thanks. Proper. 
This building has been here since the 1800s. No joke. This place originally owned by a jeweler. The jeweler introduced some sort of like engagement ring thing. Uh, made a load of money. Ended up selling the building to the Grand Trunk Railroad, who used it as a ticket office. This is all going on in the late 1800s. This uh, this location, this building, has been here ever since. This is proper historical Detroit landmark right here. Now they serve Michigan's finest beers on tap, and only Michigan's finest beers on tap. All right, so one more hand to relay to you guys. There's an early position raise to 75. There's three calls, and I looked down at Ace Five of Diamonds in the big blind. Small suited ace can make the wheel, can make a nut flush, can make two pair trips, full houses, all sorts of stuff. So I go ahead and make the call as well, and we go six ways to a flop. Flop up to ace jack four rainbow. I check it, and the action ends up checking all the way through. Turn is pretty good for us. Turn is a deuce of diamonds. It seems a little bit unlikely that uh, anyone has top pair, although it is certainly possible that someone is spot controlling as well. But we also pick up the nut flush draw and we pick up the straight draw to go along with our top pair. So I feel like it's worth a bet. I feel like we can get value from some other flush draws, maybe a disbelieving jack. So I go ahead and put out a bet. I bet $180. Holds all the way to the button who makes the call. River is a pretty interesting card. River is a jack of diamonds. So we make the nut flush, but it pairs the board. I feel like my opponent, if he was drawing, he pretty much has to bet this river card. If he has a jack, he for sure has to bet this river card. If he has an ace, he might just check behind, but we block a lot of those hands having an ace ourselves. So, with that in mind, I go ahead and check it over to him, expecting him to put in a bet. And good news is that he does put in a bet. He bets $200. I feel like there's some value in putting in a raise here. I feel like if we put in a raise, He'll be tempted to call with his flushes. Jack might be a little bit tough to get a call from since he can't beat any flushes. He can only beat a bluff with a jack, pretty much. I don't expect him to have too many full houses here. I feel like we should have more full houses than he should since we bet the turn and he just called. I feel like I'm very likely to have the best hand here on the river. So I go ahead and put in a check raise. A check raise to $550. Pretty small, pretty small re-raise. Hoping to get value from worse flushes and maybe a stubborn jack. My opponent thinks for a little while, and then he puts in a re-raise and makes it $900 to go. So he basically clicks it back to us. Now it's a little bit concerning. Not really loving the situation that much. He should never be putting in a re-raise with a non-nut flush or a bear jack. The problem is that the price is just so good. The price is so small after he clicks it back that it leaves me with very little choice. I don't think I can just give it up, uh, just fold for this price. I don't expect to um, be winning all that often when he puts in the re-raise here, but there's always the small chance that he could be doing this with smaller flush and trying to get value from a jack. Uh, second up flush, trying to get value from a worse flush. Who knows, who knows what? Um, but the price is just so good and my hand is relatively high on the scale here um, with a nut flush. Perhaps if I had a smaller flush, I could find a fold here, but I think with the nut flush, I think I just have to shrug and call it off for this price. So that's what I do. I toss in the call and he shows us pocket deuces. So value tell myself there a little bit with the uh, I'm going for the check raise. It did not work out in my favor at all. Um, maybe it's better to lead. Maybe it's better to check call. Uh, check raise doesn't work out this time. 